And when Leo DeRocher told a newspaper man that he'd seen plenty of blacks good enough for the big leagues, Landis forced him to claim he had been misquoted. But the hypocrisy of fighting racism abroad while ignoring it at home grew clearer. Pickets appeared at Yankee Stadium with signs reading, if we are able to stop bullets, why not balls? Just a, a small snippet there from uh, Ken Burns' outstanding documentary of Baseball 1994. Uh, Ken Burns is back with us right now. Ken, uh, you did a 10th inning updated 10 years ago for the steroid era and more. Are we going to get to an 11th inning at some point? Boy, I hope so. I promised, you know, uh, and, and rather cavalier. I said, well, when the Cubs win the World Series, you know, which seemed like, as George Will said, they were having a bad century, um, <laughs> that, that, uh, that we would do it. And now, of course, they've done it. And now I'm sort of hemming and hawing. We're busy with eight projects that we're working on right now. So uh, we, we made a, a standalone a portrait of Jackie Robinson uh, a few years ago. And we'll get back to baseball, uh, most definitely. I, I, I can't not do it. It tells us too much about who we are. It holds up a mirror, sometimes uncomfortable and, mm. and sometimes very proudly. I mean, as John Thorne, the great historian of baseball, says that he's never prouder to be a baseball fan or prouder to be American when baseball has led rather than followed. And that was in the wake mm. of uh, Jackie coming up in 47. Wow. Um, Ken, I want to throw in a personal story here. I remember Kevin Millar and his producers asked me, BK, you into country music? I said, no, nah, I'm not a country music fan. <laughs> and then during uh, the quarantine, I started watching your documentary on country music. And I knew every artist. I knew every song. And I realized, oh, wait, yeah. like just through cultural absorption. Of course, I'm a country music fan. How did That's you right. like figure out, like, let's do something on country music? And what did you learn? Well, I knew I want to pick stuff that I think that I that I don't know about and I want to know about. I rather than tell you what I already know. The last time I checked, that's called homework. I'd rather share with you the process of discovery. And what I found out in country music is that you know we tend to, for commerce and convenience, sort of in silo all of these musical forms into a separate branch. But all the artists, they listen to everybody else. All the great mentors of country music, the early great stars had African-American uh, teachers, uh, Hank Williams, uh, A.P. Carter, Johnny Cash, Bill Monroe, you know, you name it, uh, uh, you know, Jimmy Rogers. They all, they were inspired uh, by other kinds of music. And so what happens is, is that people say, oh, I'm not a country music fan. That was the first film I ever worked on where people looked at me like, um, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and then afterwards they said, I didn't like you, I didn't realize how much I knew, how yeah. much I did love it, how much it's part of the mainstream. And it isn't just the crossover artists. It's that all of the music is interrelated. Wynton Marsalis, the great jazz trumpeters in the country music film saying music is the art of the invisible. It gets to us faster than anything else. And it speaks to enduring themes. I mean, when Hank Williams says, I'm so lonesome, I can cry. There's nobody on the planet that doesn't know what he means. Um, in this day and age, Ken, uh, everyone is an amateur filmmaker. Um, give us the key, if you could tell people out there, on how to document history and then telling a story, how to do that properly um, to show an audience and do it uh, with the best representation of real life that you can. You know, Brian, that's a great question. I There's no orthodoxy that I could give. Um, I think there's lots of different ways to tell stories. That's the biggest part. The word history and what I've chosen to do and is mostly made up of the word story plus high, which is a good kind of introduction to things. And um, what we try to do is assemble some complicated facts. You know, nothing is ever completely all one thing or all the other. So we like contradiction. We like undertow. The greatest of heroes have feats of clay. The worst villains have a human dimension. And so we tried to extend that and tell a story that isn't just from the top down. That would mean that American history is only the series of presidential administrations punctuated by wars, but from the bottom up, that you could learn as much from, from baseball or from, you know, the story of, of this individual 
uh, and not some super famous person is a way a way to do it. And over the 45 years that I've had the privilege of trying to figure out how to tell stories, and you're always a student, you always hope you're getting better, we've been able to speak to Americans about themes that are common. A lot of documentaries are contemporary about moments in that are, are happening now. But what we found is that people like to say history repeats itself, it doesn't. It, I haven't finished working on it and looked up and said, oh my God, it's talking about today, mm -hmm. today. And all of the themes are, 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 are common to today. And every film that I've worked on this morning, uh, it's resonated with the themes that we're talking about today. And, and I like that. It gives a space where people of differing political uh, persuasions, of differing class, you know, rich and poor, young and old, north and south, east and west, you can have a conversation among the facts of history. Now, we have to be super careful that um, the people who manipulate history for propaganda are just like the people who promote the false facts that we are finding so difficult to absorb and, and, and figure out how to parse in our contemporary situation. So I, I just think it's a, it's a personal point of honor that for us in the editing room, we first want to get our facts right, and then we want to tell a good story. And a good story means including everybody in it, uh, not just a mm -hmm. few people. Not the people who wrote the history, but maybe sometimes the people who often get left out of that history. Well, you certainly set a standard for that. And I think now uh, in these polarizing times, it's more important than ever uh, to look and view uh, the way you've documented history and the way you continue to do so. Ken, it's always a pleasure. We'd love to do it another time. Thank you so much. And by next week, you'll be watching some baseball. No crowds, but you'll be watching baseball. <laughs> One week. Go Sox. <laughs> go Sox. I cannot wait. I'm, I'm dressed up with no place to go, but well, I'll, be, well, I'll be watching. Ready to go. That's it. In, 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 a, in a loft in his barn and exactly the way you figure Ken Burns would be hanging right now. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Ken Burns.